Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another Plenty video. I hope that you are all doing so well. Today I'm going to be showing you all of the trailing plants that I currently have in my collection. I consider trailing plants to be one of my all-time favorite like types or styles of plants. I love the look of them. I think that they can totally change a space. And yeah, I have quite a few in my collection. You can see I have a bunch behind me here. Um, I do have some other plants that are like long or like for example my pendant anthuriums kind of have a similar look but I don't think I'm going to consider, I don't think I'm going to include them in this video because I guess I'm, my like criteria for trailing is going to be more of like vining where multiple leaves like grow down a vine type of vibe. <laughs> Since I'm renting I don't have trailing plants hanging from the ceiling which is unfortunate because that's one of my absolute favorite looks. I love when people have just a lot of plants hanging down from their ceiling uh, so hopefully I will have that one day soon but I've had to come up with different ways to display my plants. So the obvious one behind me is my Wally Grow wall. Other than that I have my mother vertical garden um, and I also have a canopy bed frame which I really wanted just for the purpose of being able to hang plants off of it but I've seen a lot of people do really creative things like using um, what are they called garment racks like that's meant for hanging clothes on I've seen people have those in their homes and have them like in front of a window or something and then having a bunch of plants hanging off of there um, I also have plants hanging off of just different furniture like I have some of my string ofs on top of my Mills Bow Tall kind of trailing down the side and I do actually have one plant hanging from my ceiling I'll show you really quick um, it's my variegated string of hearts and as you can see it's hanging right there and it's actually attached to the ceiling with a command hook so I mean it's held up great for just a small plant like that but obviously I can't put any large plants on that hook so um, I guess that's like a renter friendly way to hang just very small pots like I wouldn't do more than a four inch on that. Anyways, yeah, there's so many different ways that you can display trailing plants, which I love. They're so diverse. I love when people have shelves on their walls too with them trailing down. I think that that looks so pretty. So yeah, I love them. I love seeing photos of them. And yeah, they just add like such a cool element to the home. So I'm a big fan. Anyways, okay, I'm just gonna start grabbing them and showing you all of the trailing plants that I have in my collection. Of course, when I start filming, the sun starts going away. <laughs> Sorry if it's kind of on and off with the lighting situation. So I'm just kind of going to kind of fire through them. I'm going to try not to talk too much about each specific plant because we do have quite a few to go through. So this is the first one. This is my Cebu Blue Pothos. And I love Cebu. Well, I love any Epipremnum honestly in general they're such hardy plants they grow so quickly and they're just so beautiful especially the Cebu blue because it does have that silvery blue kind of tone to it this is a leaf color that i just love this was such a coveted plant when i first got into house plants um and i remember being so excited to trade for a cutting of this and i like couldn't believe that someone was willing to trade with me to give me a cutting of their Cebu blue pothos which it's like i don't know it's sweet to think back on because now they're so common where i am they're not super common in plant shops or big box stores they do show up in like the local plant shops every now and then but uh if you were to like post in your local facebook group like i guarantee you'd be able to find someone who would be willing to even just like give you cuttings like look at how long mine is i would i would be very willing to just like cut some of this and give it to someone because when I trim this, I end up just like composting the cuttings sometimes if I'm not gonna pot them back into the plant because yeah, it's just, it's a very vigorous grower. And don't get mad at me for doing that. I do compost my plants sometimes. I just, you know, there's a lot of them in here. But yeah, this is the first one. I love it so much. I actually just added, look, I said I wasn't gonna talk a lot about each plant and here I am just going on and on. Um, I actually added just earlier this week or last week, I added in some cuttings that I had propagating. So uh, we're going to get some more vines coming from the back here, which is very nice. And that's something that I've been doing for a while. Like something scared me. <laughs> something I've been doing for a while is just adding cuttings in here to try to fill this out. So it's finally, these are finally starting to bush out. You can see it's like very full at the top and then eventually these are all going to vine down and I'll have more than just like a few strands. But yeah. 
love this one so much. If you like silver leaves and you like pothos or epipremnum, um, you definitely need this one. It's just, it's a staple. I moved the camera a little bit because I think the lighting might be a little bit better this way. Just ignore if you can see my messy kitchen in the background and Olive is also in a nest right here. She actually hurt her back. She has a back injury that she's recovering from. So she's probably just gonna be sleeping in her nest in the next few videos. Okay, next we have my Black Pagoda Lipstick Plant, which was actually having a rough time for a little while. First of all, I got this as cuttings last summer, spring or summer, and it was doing really well. It even bloomed for me in the fall, I believe, and the blooms were so stunning. I couldn't believe it. They were this beautiful, vivid yellow color. And I posted photos of the blooms, and I actually had a lot of people comment that they, the blooms on their Black Pagoda lipstick plant didn't look like that, and they were just green. Um, and apparently there's two different types of this. One type has the green blooms, and then one has the yellow. I mean, maybe there's more than two different types. There might, there might be more, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, mine has the stunning yellow bloom, so I'm very excited about that. But yeah, bloomed in the fall and then had a bit of a rough winter and I think it was just because it wasn't happy where it was. It was on the windowsill and I think it was just getting scorched by the baseboard heater a little bit. So I moved it. Now it lives on my bed frame and it seems super happy there. Look at this new growth we're getting. Like it just looks so lush and healthy. It doesn't so much have, I mean, it does a little bit have the pattern. Maybe it just, they just need to darken up and harden off. Yeah, there's lots of new growth on this. So I'm really happy about that. This part is even starting to trail a little bit. I was debating not including this in the video because I was like, well, it's not really trailing, but it's a trailing plant and it will be trailing and it's starting to trail a little bit. So I had to include it. But yeah, this is just in a small nursery pot still. And it's one of the ones that comes with like a little plastic handle. So I just um, like undo this and then put it on my canopy bed frame and then just do it up again super handy little setup but yeah love this one so much and I'm so glad that it's finally looking better you can see like some of these old leaves from the winter months just were not um were not looking great so we're making a comeback here next I have a Hoya this is my Hoya Waliniana UT152 bit of a mouthful for the name of this one but uh, this is such a fantastic Hoya. I actually got this as like quite a small plant, like cutting size, I would say, a few years ago. And it's just not even a few, I think two years ago. And it's just exploded with growth. I've taken a lot of cuttings from this. Um, and it actually is not doing its best right now. Like it's had better days. Uh, it looks pretty good, like not bad, but it's been losing some leaves. They've been doing this weird damage thing that... I posted on my Instagram, I was not sure what's going on with this damage because a lot of leaves are turning like this and then falling off and it seems to just keep happening. I think it's actually slowed down now, so perhaps we've turned a corner and it's just settling in. I did repot this. <laughs> I'm all over the place with this description, but I repotted this about a month ago and then that started happening. So maybe it was just adjusting to the new pot, I don't know, but I did have a lot of people respond to me on Instagram saying that it looks like light damage. So I did move the grow light a little bit further away. It's just um, in front of an Amazon grow light. But yeah, I think it's actually doing better now and it does have new growth coming in. If you can see, oh my goodness, I don't know if you can see. There's new growth there and there's new growth there. But this is one of the fastest growing Hoyas in my collection and it actually sun stresses so beautifully. If you are into sunstress Hoya, like the purple that this gets is so phenomenal. I'll try to insert a photo. Mine's not really sunstressed right now. It was sunstressed when it was living under my Soltec light. There's a little bit of sunstressing left on that one. But since I moved it from the, the Soltec, it just kind of lost its sunstressing. Sunstressing is basically just like a tan. It will come and go depending on whether it's like continuously exposed to that light or not. But yeah, hopefully this will just continue to improve and be healthy because I would be so sad if um, I lost the whole plant. I actually took insurance cuttings just to make sure that I wouldn't lose the whole plant because I love it so much and I would be very sad if that happened. But yeah, it's just, it's a gorgeous Hoya and besides whatever went on after this repot, it's been like so, so easy to care for and just very, very fast growing. And it's also bloomed for me multiple times as well. 
which is very fun. We love a blooming plant. Okay, next, I cannot believe this one, and I know it's not gonna fit into the frame fully, but this is my trailing jade. I will put the botanical name, I'll put the botanical name of all of these on the screen, but um, this was reclassified. I had like mastered the name and then it was reclassified and now I just like can't keep track anymore. So I just call it by its common name, which is trailing jade, but it's actually not, it's not actually a jade. Um, I think some people get confused and they think that this is actually like a type of jade, but it's not. It's a, it's a different plant entirely. That's just the common name because the leaves look similar to a jade plant. But yeah, this one is so cool and it's a relatively um, easy to find and affordable house plant also. I just picked this up at a local plant store. I got like this, this is like a, I don't know, six inch pot I would say for $14.99. And we've been on a bit of a journey. It did, it was dropping vines for a little while and then we turned a corner and now it's growing super long and lush and bushy. And now it's just like the easiest plant in the world to care for. I love it so much. There's so many new vines growing at the top here. So pretty, it's gonna be even more full. And I do have three really long vines here as well. And I love them so much. I think that this gives such a cool vibe if you have like the boho aesthetic happening. I don't really have that, but um, if you do have that and you had this plant in a macrame, it would just look so good. I would love to get this plant in like a nice pot or a macrame hanger or something like that one day, and I will. I just haven't yet, but I just know that it's gonna look so good. I just think it has such a cool look. Like it's, it's so cool to have like a succulent that's trailing, you know? I think that look is something that I really love, like the trailing succulent plant type of look because the burrow's tail succulent is also one of my all-time favorite trailing plants. I don't currently have one in my collection, but it will always be one of my favorites. I just think that they're so gorgeous and so cool, especially when they're really long and lush. This also comes in a variegated form, which I don't have, but it's stunning. Um, and this also sun stresses really nicely. I have heard. Mine has never been sun stressed because it doesn't get a ton of like direct sun or direct light, but apparently it will sun stress really beautifully so maybe one day i'll have this in a south facing window and we'll be able to see that okay next we have another hoya one of my favorite hoya actually and that is my hoya matilde which is looking really good these days i must say it's got a lot of new growth that's happening up here from multiple different vines i've just repotted more cuttings into the top so it's going to start filling out even more and yeah, it's just trailing so, so beautifully. I love the the round shape of these leaves and like how dark they can get. Look at these ones, they're huge. They're so huge and dark. Oh my goodness, I just love them so much. And the little like speckling, it's so pretty. If you give this Hoya a lot of light, the leaves will come out looking more like this, a lighter green and a bit smaller which is very cute, but I do prefer the darker leaves. So this is the vine that it put out when I moved it to lower lights. You can see they're a little bit bigger. They're even like a little bit less round, which is fine. They're still really cute, but yeah, just like more, more of a dark green. I do tend to prefer that, but yeah, it's such a beautiful Hoya and so, so easy and very fast growing. I've never had any problems with my Hoya Matilde. This is a hybrid between Hoya carnosa and Hoya serpens, and it definitely just has the ease of care that a Hoya carnosa has. So yeah, I appreciate this one so much, and yeah, I'm excited to see it grow even more. This is one that for some reason I've never been able to bloom, even though it has like 50 peduncles on it. None of them have ever like brought a bloom all the way to fruition. Uh, I've had them try, but then they just blast, they just dry up. So um, yeah, wish me luck for getting this to bloom. Maybe this year, that would be really awesome. Okay, next we have this big gal here. This is my Hoya Crimson Queen, um, whom I've had for several years now. And as you can see, she's massive. She's so beautiful, very lush, very healthy. One of my favorite plants, I just, yeah, I love it so much. It's been one of my, one of the easiest plants I've ever had. And yeah, the care for it is so minimal. I actually only water this probably once a month, 
maybe even less than that honestly i've never repotted it it's still in the original pot and potting mix that it came in from the nursery it's actually due for a watering pretty soon i think it's starting to dry out i can tell it's like super lightweight um but yeah it's it's been doing really well recently like it honestly has vines putting out new leaves everywhere all over it there's vines woo, with new leaves it puts out vines with these beautiful all white leaves that come out like kind of pink which is so pretty she doesn't hold on to the white leaves forever but she does hold on to them for quite a while like you can see she has um several vines with just all white look at how big some of these leaves are like some of these leaves are just crazy again a uh, lower light is going to give you bigger foliage like honestly some of these i wish i could show better but some of these are just massive look at how pretty this is wow just so gorgeous yeah this is actually another hoya that i've never been able to bloom which seems strange because it's such a like mature big full healthy hoya but I think it's just never had enough light, is my guess. I don't know. I do have it under a grow light now, so I'm thinking maybe I'll be able to get it to bloom for me. But I don't see any peduncles or anything yet, so I don't know what that's about. It's just, I don't know. I guess it makes it even more exciting for whenever she does decide to bloom for me. That is just going to be so cool whenever that happens. Yeah, I love her so much. Look at the pink on these leaves. So gorgeous. Okay, next is my beautiful Hoya Linearis. This is for sure in my top three Hoya of all time. I love it so much. I just think that this is like the coolest look for a plant ever. Mine's not even that full yet. I mean, it's getting there. It's definitely grown a lot and it's getting more full, but yeah, something about the way that this hangs is so satisfying to me and just looks so gorgeous. And the leaves are fuzzy as well. They have like a very slight soft fuzz to them which is so cool they're small but they are more succulent like they do have some thickness and some density to them i honestly can't recommend this hoya enough it's been really easy for me really easy to propagate and it just gives like such a cool look oh my goodness mine is getting long if you've been following my channel for a while then you would know that i've been on a mission to fill this pot out i've been chopping and propping and adding the cuttings back into the pot here so slowly but surely i'm getting those um those propagations to grow out and become new vines that are going to get longer and longer and eventually we'll have a nice thick long full plant I did a video not too long ago where I added some cuttings into here and I also upgraded it into this planter. Uh, it was just in like a plastic nursery pot before so it was very satisfying to see it go from that to just being in like a nice, a nice little decorative pot. Um, and it is a hanging planter. Again, this hangs on my bed frame so yeah, it's just so cute and it's actually inside of here in a yogurt container and it just happens to fit really well. So yeah, whatever works, my friends, whatever works. It's so hard to find nursery pots to fit inside of these decorative planters. I won't get on that soapbox because I've said it before and y'all already know. But yeah, Hoya Linearis, love it so much. Haven't had this one bloom for me either, but hopefully one day. I would, oh my goodness, I'll perish when this blooms for me. Okay, next we have this little cutie right here, which is my Hoya Shepardii, also commonly called the string bean Hoya because obviously it looks like little beans with the slender, narrow leaves. Um, some of them are quite long on mine. Like, look at that. It's so cool. It's such a unique Hoya. These aren't like particularly rare or anything, but for some reason I still don't see a lot of people have these and I don't know what that's about. Like to me, this is just like so, <clears throat> so different and cool. Um, so let me know if you have one because yeah, I feel like I'm alone in this, but it's so easy to care for. Mine blooms every spring. It's so pretty. And I just think that it gives such a cool look with these super long leaves coming off of the vines. It's just like, yeah, it's so cool. Mine has a cluster of peduncles right up here that haven't bloomed for me yet, so I wonder if they're gonna bloom for me this spring or summer. Because I've already had blooms on it this spring, but the blooms were lower down on the vines. 
So we'll see. It's also been putting out a lot of new leaves recently, and they're so cute when they come in. Let me see if I can find one. Oh, right here. Look at how small. Look at that. It's so tiny and cute. But yeah, such a great, easygoing Hoya. Okay, that felt like it was turning into a Hoya collection video for a minute, but I do have different, different varieties of plants that I will be talking about next as well. Um, but there is going to be some overlap in these collection videos though, because for example, next month in May, I'm going to be posting my philodendron collection. So you'll see, you know, some of my trailing philodendron appear again in that. And then I think in June, I'll be doing an updated Hoya collection, but there'll be some time in between anyways. So maybe there'll be some cool updates on the Hoya that I show in this video, in that video, if you know what I mean. Anyways. Moving along to the next plant, we have a really cool one actually. This is my silver dollar vine and it's like a vining succulent with very round leaves. I just think that this is so beautiful. I love round leaves, like that's a feature in plants that I just really gravitate towards. So not only does it have these really cool round leaves, but it also has this like silverish hue to it, that like blue green kind of color, which I also just adore in plants. So this is just such a perfect plant. This lives in a self-facing window and it seems really happy there. And I basically treat this the same as I do my Hoya. Um, it kind of looks like a Hoya actually, but yeah, it's, it's not a Hoya. <laughs> You'll see the name on the screen, um, but yeah. Just a really cool plant and the way that the leaves grow on some of the vines like the um i don't even know what to call it but the like pattern that they do coming in like i don't know they just look so cool a really fun and different one this one i have mine growing trailing because i just love the way it looks but um, a lot of people grow these on trellises which looks really beautiful as well I guess that goes for most trailing plants. You can trellis them, um, but yeah, for me, I just like to have a lot of them grown as trailing because I love the way the trailing plants look. Okay, I wasn't sure if this one met my criteria for the plants that I'm including in this video, but I think that it technically does because each of these like leaves grows consecutively like one after the other in kind of like a, a chain link formation. So I do think that I consider it to be trailing, but yeah, this is my Ripsalis Paradoxa. Just a moment, my phone's ringing. Hello? 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 Okay, yes, this is my Ripsalis Paradoxa. Such a cool plant. This is a type of jungle cactus, so it has a more succulent leaf. And I just think that it is so unique. I know I've said that about a lot of plants in this video, but it just is. Like, they're so cool. I remember I wanted this so, so badly as soon as I saw it, especially when people have, like, a big, a full basket of it, a trailing down. It just looks so beautiful. So I wanted this so bad, and then somebody gifted me a cutting, and I was able to root it and then pot it up. And now it's a full plant, which is very fun. So I'm really excited to watch this grow and fill out and get even longer over the years. It has started growing again for the spring. This is a new growth down at the bottom. I know I was showing it in one of my last update videos. But yeah, it's a little bit more thin and brighter green, so eventually it will plump up and look like the growth up here at the top. There's also three new vines coming out at the top here, these three, which is very exciting. But yeah, such a rewarding plant to grow. Whenever I see that little new growth start poking out from one of the vines, I get so excited. This also lives in my south-facing window and yeah, I think it's a really easy plant to grow and also a really easy plant to propagate as well. Okay, next we have this monstrosity. This is my Hoya Compacta, just the regular green form. I do also have the inner variegated and the outer variegated, but I've just never had any luck with growing those ones and they're not exactly trailing yet. So I'm just gonna be featuring this green one in the video. I've had this for probably four-ish years now. This is one of the first Hoya that I ever got and I bought it as just one small vine in a little four inch pot at a big box store and now it has obviously grown a lot. Um, it's bloomed for me once, which was so exciting, and it smelled like chocolate or like Tootsie Rolls. Oh my goodness, it was just, oh, that was the best when this bloomed for me. I hope it does again this summer. But yeah, it's so gorgeous. It has beautiful, like, deep green foliage. I love the color of it. 
This also lives in a south facing window so I'm a little surprised that it's not more of like a bleached lighter green but I don't know it's maintained it's like nice dark foliage and apparently there's a dark form of this. I saw that online once or I saw a shop selling that. I don't know if that's actually a thing um, but I've seen it. I've seen like plants listed as that before. We have a new vine coming out here. This is all like fresh and new. And then we also, oh, this is kind of funny. This, um, this is a new vine that's growing against my window. So it's like completely flattened. Yeah, it just kind of like snuck in and I didn't really realize it was growing against the window like that, but it was. And then this is another new vine that's coming in as well. So this plant's been really happy recently and growing a lot as you can see. It's in this terracotta pot, which I think looks so gorgeous, but eventually I would like to um, pot it in a hanging basket so that I can hang it in the future. It's on my windowsill right now, but I think that this would just be so stunning hanging. So one day that would be the plan for this plant, but for now it just lives there and it seems quite content with that. Okay, next is my Thai pink lipstick plant. I honestly think that this is one of the prettiest trailing plants that I have in my collection and I feel like I'm not doing it justice because it's still in its nursery pot. Like this deserves a stunning pot um, because this is so pretty. Just like the pattern, the pattern that the leaves grow in, it just looks like so organized and so beautiful and oh, the leaves are just so gorgeous. Like I don't know if you can tell, just they're so vibrant and healthy looking. It looks like this new growth is even getting a tiny bit, let me see if I can try to show you, a tiny bit sun stressed because it is under my Soltec grow light. I'm not sure if that's going to show up on camera, but um, it looks a little pink and darker around the edges, which is really cute. Um, so not only is the foliage on this plant stunning, but its blooms are so gorgeous. They're this beautiful, I'm obviously pink color. The name is Thai pink lipstick plant and that's because of the blooms. Um, yeah, so, so cute. I can't wait until this blooms for me one day. That's honestly just gonna be so exciting. But even when it's not in bloom, I enjoy the foliage so much. Something about this is just, it's just really nice to me. It's gorgeous. Oh, maybe you can see the sun stressing better on this vine. I don't know if you can, but yeah. Anyways, love it, it's so pretty. It's also been so easy for me to care for. I just water it, it's pretty much bone dry right now. I just water it when it gets like super dry like that. I'll give it a very thorough watering um, and it grows so quickly. I got this as just a small plant in the fall, I think maybe in September. I don't know if I'll have a photo, but if I do, I'll definitely um, pop it in because yeah, the growth is just very, very impressive on this. Okay, this gal is not looking too hot. This is my, I was gonna say lipstick plant, but that's not what it is. My Hoya Bella variegated. I have both the outer variegated and one vine of the inner variegated in this pot. And I don't know what it is, you guys. I used to have a green Hoya Bella, which grew so fast, was so easy, so lush and healthy, and bloomed for me all the time. It was just, it was honestly a dream plant. And for some reason, this is, this has happened to me a couple times. Um, this ha is what happened to me with my bear paw succulent as well. I'm like, oh, the, the regular green one is growing so well. It looks amazing and it's so easy. I want to get the variegated version because that's exciting and that's cool. And I, it's just like a scam because I get the variegated version and I'm like, what the heck? I do not have the same experience at all. So honestly, I wish I would have just kept my green one. I don't know. I'm going to keep trying with this one, but... My experience with the green one was 10 out of 10 and this, oh my god, my alarm. I have so many alarms going for all of the different medications that Olive is on right now. I keep getting startled, but um, anyways, my variegated Hoya Bella haven't been able to crack the code on this one yet. Um, let me know if any of you have had the same experience. In general, love Hoya Bella, but yeah, this one has just, it's not been the vibe. Okay, next is my string of needles or Serapegia linearis. And it's just, um, you know, it's similar to string of hearts, but it just has these narrow leaves instead, which I think is kind of fun, a little different. They do get a little bit sun stressed as well. They turn a little bit purple on the backs. They do have a silver marking on them as well, which is just a little detail that you don't really notice unless you're looking at them up close. 
Mine has gotten a little bit unruly, especially at the bottom. Apparently these actually like to climb. A lot of people trellis theirs, but I just have mine hanging. So it's just, it's a little bit crazy. It's a very easy plant, very fast growing, but um, I do need to do some maintenance to mine to get it looking a little bit nicer. Uh, it looks kind of crazy because it's kind of like thin at the top and then it like goes into this weird tangled mess on the bottom. But yeah, as far as Serapeggia go, this one is a little bit unique and a little bit different, so I really like it. Okay, next, another very unruly plant that, I mean, I shouldn't even say unruly. It just needs maintenance. It's just been neglected. It's not the plant's fault, it's my fault. But this is my regular string of hearts. And it's actually doing better now than it was a couple of months ago. It started to put out a lot of new growth. But I started, well, this happened when I rearranged and this spot, this plant, no longer had a spot by the window so it just started crisping and not looking as well so the bottom basically needs to be cut off I'm trying to show you i just haven't done it yet but there's just a lot of dead vines down there um, however it has started putting out a lot of new growth from the top which is nice you can see those bright new vines everywhere um, I think that it really likes the plant spectrum, like the light that it gets from the plant spectrum lights inside my Millsbow because this sits on top of my Millsbow so it just gets kind of light from the sides of the cabinet. There's a lot of new growth coming out there. But yeah, honestly this is a gorgeous plant. When they're cared for properly, they can look really bad or they can look really good. Mine is not looking very good right now, but I still love it and I know that, you know, one day it's going to look really good again. Whenever I decide to take some time to kind of sort it out. Um, but yeah, I was gonna let it go, but then I decided I didn't want to, I just wanna keep it and I'll fix it up one day. And it also has my cute little 100K subscriber thing that my friend Shannon made for me. But yeah, that's it. It's very long, it's very, very long. Speaking of long, I think that this video is going to be quite long as well. So I'm just gonna fly through some of these little trailing plants that I have inside my Millsbow Ikea cabinet. Um, so this is my Peperomia prostrata, or string of turtles. Looks like crap. Uh, I am trying to revive this. I actually recently put some little propagations in the top. I need to water this. Actually, I'm going to keep it out. I really want to have a nice full pot of this. I love them so much. Like, honestly, probably one of my all-time favorite trailing plants as far as, like, seeing photos of other people's. But for me, this is what mine looks like. So, yeah. And then we have my Hoya Serpens, which is actually doing pretty well. This is so cute. Like, what a cutie Hoya. I love it so much. Love the tiny dark leaves. They actually are a little bit fuzzy too. And the shape of them looks like little snake heads. Don't know how well my camera will pick it up, but yeah, it's really cool. I can definitely see why it got its name. Um, not a particularly fast growing Hoya for me. Also didn't enjoy the winter. It was looking pretty rough a couple months ago, but it started to kind of perk up now that we're going into spring. I asked on my Instagram a while ago what plant I should pot into my beautiful soul planter here, this little sun planter that my friend gifted me. I'm literally obsessed and yes, it's still empty. <laughs> I might actually wait until next month to put a plant in it. You'll find out why, eventually. But um, yeah, there's nothing in it yet. And I asked what plant I should put in it, and some people, actually quite a few people, responded with Hoya Serpents. And I was like, wait, that would be so cute. But I think that my Hoya Serpents is too small for this. Like, this is such a tiny pot to upgrade it to that big one. So for Hoya, I just feel like that's a risky move. So I'll probably end up going with String of Pearls for this, which I'll have to buy. Or String of Hearts might be cute in here. I was thinking like my variegated String of Hearts would be really cute in here too. But yeah, I really, I was like, oh, Hoya Serpens, that's perfect. But I just, I don't know, maybe when it gets bigger, I'll be able to put it in this planter in the future. Okay, next we have my Hoya Croniana. This is just the regular version. It is pretty splashy though, I will say. I do have the silver, the super silver version as well, but this is just... I don't know, like a regular one, I guess. And it is pretty splashy. It is pretty cute. I do really like it. And it has bloom for me, which is very nice. This lives in my Millsbo Ikea cabinet, but it needs to come out. It's outgrown it and it actually just fell down in there. So I need to figure out a spot that I can put this because yeah, it just grows fast. It's a bit of a beast. I would say that this is a great Hoya for beginners if you're wanting like a cute little trailing Hoya. 
because it's very easy to take care of and it also blooms really easily so it's very rewarding and satisfying to grow but yeah little cutie okay next we have another plant that lives in my ikea greenhouse cabinet and it is another hoya this is my Hoya Hushkleana variegata, and as you can see, it's quite bushy. This is actually pretty big, and I've trimmed this a couple of times and taking, taken cuttings from it. Um, I get questions on how I care for this Hoya because some people have a hard time with it, but I just have no helpful advice to share because it's just been so low maintenance and so easy for me. It's never given me any problems. I feel like I just got really lucky with just like a really a specimen with really strong genetics because yeah it's just been so prolific ever since I got it what just fell off we lost a leaf that's okay um the one thing I will say is that I've never been able to get mine to bloom I don't see any peduncles on, or anything I've had it for wait oh no it's not I thought wait there's something weird but I don't think it's a peduncle I don't know what that is but yeah it's never bloomed for me I would love to see it bloom one day it has blooms that are really unique from the other blooms I've had happen in my collection. So yeah, my fingers are crossed to bloom this one day, but even without the blooms, like obviously the foliage is just so stunning. One of the prettiest variegated Hoya, in my opinion, it has that really gorgeous like watercolor painting kind of look to it. Okay, next we have another Hoya. This is my Hoya Sigillatus and um, yeah, this is one that I honestly don't really talk about a lot because it's it's just, um, it's never doing anything crazy. It doesn't cause me any trouble, but it also is never, like, it's never bloomed for me. It's never growing super fast. Like, it's definitely grown since I got it, and I really love it. I think that the leaves are really gorgeous. They have pretty unique pattern and coloring to them, which is cool, and it's just, like, a bit of a different look than the rest of the Hoya in my collection. But yeah, it's just, um, it just kind of hangs out and I really like it, but um, yeah, I just don't have terribly much to say about it. This is one of the only Hoyas that I have in pawn and it gets pretty gross in there. As you can see, I'm pretty sure I like scrubbed that out the last time I changed the water too and it just gets so full of algae again. But yeah, Hoya Sigillatus. Maybe it'll start growing for me this summer. That would be really cool. Next we have my Monstera adansonii, one of my favorites when it comes to trailing plants. Now mine isn't very big. I do have cuttings that need to be potted back into here though because I'm planning to like fill it out more. Oh shoot, this is what happens sometimes. The new growth will grow through the fenestrations. Can you see that? Oh my goodness, I'll have to carefully try to get that out. Okay, there, I got it. Um, yeah, I love Monstera adansonii. This is obviously just the regular green form. I do have the variegated one as well, but it's kind of in pieces right now. So yeah, I'm just gonna be showing the green one. This one honestly doesn't look its best either. It definitely looked better like six months ago, but I still love it so much. These are so gorgeous, especially when they're nice and healthy. Mine isn't a great example. The leaves have a really pretty sheen to them, which I don't hear a lot of people talk about, but they do in the sun. If you look at your Adansonii, the leaves kind of sparkle. They're just so pretty. Um, really easy plants to take care of as well. Mine's obviously been neglected, but um, yeah, these grow super quickly. You can propagate them really easily and get a nice full lush pot. Again, this is a plant that I don't really see people talk about or show off a lot anymore. It used to be really popular around four or five years ago and it was even considered like a rare plant, just even like the green one. I remember when I found one in a plant store, I was like freaking out. Um, and now these are super, super common. You can just find them at the big box store. But yeah, I still love them and I really need to put some energy into reviving mine. Part of the problem is that it's just so cramped. So I don't really have somewhere to display this nicely. So I don't really see it often and I kind of forget about it. But um, one day it will have the spot that it deserves where it can just trail and be beautiful because yeah like I said I just love the way that they look again you can grow these um, climbing as well and get a pretty impressive leaf size on them I was considering having this climbing and then I got Monstera Escaletto which is like a bigger version of this that I'm gonna grow climbing so I decided to keep this trailing anyways Monstera Adinsonii tried and true underrated but um, easy and gorgeous
Okay, next we have my Syndapsis Jade Satin, which I'm actually kind of surprised that I can include this in this video now because for so long this plant just wouldn't grow for me. But now, as you can see, we are trailing, which is very fun. So I actually have a couple different, it's all uh, Jade Satin Syndapsis, but I have a couple different vines in here and some of them are growing really silver. As you can see, there's some really silver leaves in here. Look at how pretty that is. So these are kind of like reverted jade satin, I guess, because it's getting its variegation back, whereas the jade satin is just supposed to be like plain, deep green. Most of this vine is just green, which is really nice. It does have some speckling, but yeah, I just think that this is such a gorgeous plant. Um, and it's kind of funny because this is like the more rare, like as far as like, this is kind of like a just like a Syndapsis exotica without the silver markings, which you would think would be the more common and more like boring type. But this is actually more like rare than the Exotica, even though it's just plain. But I really like it, just the plain one. And I really like how big the leaves can get as well. I think it's really pretty. This one has like some crazy like pattern in it. Look at that. Like what the heck? So weird. Oh, there's a new leaf coming in here. Very fun. This was the last like silver leaf that came in. This seems to be pretty content just hanging out on my windowsill now. Pretty low maintenance, I don't really do too much to it. This is one of my Halloween pots that I painted. Very cute. Okay, next we have another string of hearts. This is the variegated version. I'll try to give you a close up of what the hearts look like. As you can see, white around the edges. Um, yeah, mine is just a couple of strands right now. I do need to propagate this. It's on my list, my master list of spring plant chores. Yeah, it's just two long vines. So this needs to be cut up and um, rooted and then I'll add the propagations back in here so it can be a more full plant. This is also super dry right now and I hate letting my string of hearts get like super bone dry. So I'm just gonna leave this out so I can water it. But yeah, I do really like the variegated version. I've just never had great luck growing like a nice lush full one. As I'm doing this video, I'm realizing that a lot of my plants are <laughs> quite thirsty. <laughs> Okay, next we have my Ride or Die, my Marble Queen Pothos, Greta, love her so much. This was my first house plant, and um, yeah, she holds a very special place in my heart. She used to be extremely massive, like very massive, I'm not kidding. I have a whole video showing how big she was before I cut her up. This was just grown from a cutting from her, and um, yeah, I do need to chop this soon actually because I want to, again, add more propagations into the pot to make it more full. Because look, it's just a couple of vines hanging out in there. But yeah, gorgeous, easy. In my opinion, very underrated. Like the variegation on these is just so, so pretty. Like the colors, are you kidding me? It's just gorgeous. I was getting leaves as big as my head on the main like mother plant. So hopefully I can grow this one out to be really big again as well. I do wanna take cuttings of this and do some of them climbing too. Actually, you know what? I just got some Rousseau plant care moss poles. They're right here, actually. These are front closing moss poles and um, these are front closing moss poles and I'm so eager to get more plants on them because I just really like the design. So um, perhaps this will be a candidate for that. I should take some cuttings pretty soon then. I can start that project. Okay, another string of hearts that doesn't look amazing. This is kind of similar story to my regular green string of hearts it got neglected and the bottom of the vines just like dried out so again this just needs to be cleaned up it'll be super easy to um get it looking nice again but i just i just haven't done it yet anyways this is my silver glory string of hearts and this is probably my favorite of the string of hearts varieties that i have i just think that the silver leaves are so gorgeous they have really purple backs too I mean, mine isn't in like great health right now, so this isn't this isn't a fantastic example, but it's so pretty. I can't wait to kind of give this a makeover. Maybe next month I'll do that because, yeah, I do love this plant so much and I want to see it looking good. Maybe I should, no. I was gonna say maybe I should put this into my sun planter, but I think that the variegated one would suit that more if I do go for string of hearts. Okay, whew, this video is a doozy, but I have to, I have to film it all in one go because I'm losing light, the sun's setting. Um, but next, we're almost done. I don't have too many left, I don't think. 
Next is my Hoya Croniana, the super silver version. So as you can see, most of the leaves are like a solid silver. Look at how pretty that is. Oh, I just love it so much. Like I said, I love silver foliage. So yeah, how gorgeous. And then some of them do have darker green too. Like look at this little half moon moment right there. How cute is that? Yeah, I love it. It's been so easy too. Oh my goodness, another half moon. It's been so easy since I got it. I just got this as cuttings in the fall, I think. So it hasn't even been a full year and it's, it's turned into quite a nice little plant, if I do say so myself. And my friend Jen painted this pot for me with little bats. It's a little Halloween pot. Like how cute is that? Won't talk about this one too much because it's pretty similar to my other Ripsalis Paradoxa that I showed. This is Ripsalis Paradoxa Minor. So it's just like thinner. I mean, I don't know if that's the only difference. It's like visually just looking at it, that's the only difference I can see is that it just has thinner vines. I think that this one is the more uncommon variety. And um, yeah, I don't really have much else to say about it. There's new growth coming right there. It's so cute. I love it so much. Again, I love Ripsalis Paradoxa. So I was really excited to, um, to own this variety of it as well. Okay, next we have Peperomia Hope, which is one of the only Peperomia that I have in my collection. And it, I actually ended up liking this plant so much more than I expected, just because I don't really, I don't know, I just don't, Peperomia isn't just, isn't a genus that I'm really interested in or really have a lot of, but I do have, I guess, three of them now. And I really like the three that I have. So um, yeah, my Peperomia Hope it has, oh my goodness, it has so much new, oops, I kicked the tripod, sorry. It has so much new growth that's coming in. Look right there, right there, right there, right there. Like it's so happy right now. I found this to be so easy. I got it as cuttings in last summer and yeah, it's grown into such a cute little plant. I would like to propagate this soon and fill out the pot as well. I think I featured this in one of my favorites videos not long ago. Yeah, it was a plant that I just, it was an unexpected love, I guess. Again, one of those plants that has like the trailing succulent kind of vibe that I really like and the round leaves. Look at how nice these are. So cute. But yeah, super, super low maintenance plant in my experience. Okay, and last but not least, we have the plant wall to go over. So let me grab, let me grab those down. <laughs> I actually just posted a reel on my Instagram a couple days ago doing a little spring refresh for these plants. I topped up their fertilizer. I use Osmocote slow release fertilizer and I gave them a nice, um, a nice thorough drenching in the shower. So they're pretty happy right now. These are in Wally Grow planters, which I'm obsessed with. I've talked about these a lot. I put this plant wall together and like potted all these plants into these planters last I think it was at the very end of May or the very beginning of June, so it hasn't even been a year yet. And oh my goodness, the growth that I have seen in these plants has been shocking, honestly. I did not think that they would grow this long and lush so quickly. This one was like so, so long. I just cut it recently. That's also a reel on my Instagram. Actually, I think I posted that. Ooh. Imagine if I dropped it. I posted chopping this as a YouTube short as well, but yeah, it was super, super long, but it's very, very lush and full even after the trim. I didn't even say what this is yet. This is my Syndapsis pictus argirius, which is a really common, um, like smaller leafed variety. I'm saying smaller leaf because I've always seen them to have smaller leaves than something like the Exotica. Um, but in my opinion, this is one of the superior Syndapsis because it grows so well. It's so much easier than things like the Exotica or the um, Satin Jade. So I'm team Argerius. I think it's so gorgeous and yeah, it's just, it's just been such a rewarding plant to grow. It makes me so happy. So that's the first one on my plant wall. And this is the one that I have closest to the window because I figured this was the one that would appreciate the highest light. I will also link my Wally Grow video down below if you haven't seen it and you're curious of how I put this together. It was super easy to like get these installed and everything. Oh my goodness, this one is so heavy because like I said, it was just watered not long ago. This is my Philodendron Lemon Lime, um, which honestly it looked rough for a while, but it's looking so much better now. Look at how full it is and how long. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah, it's definitely happy now. Whew, I can't even hold it up for very long. It's super, super heavy. 
But yeah, this, uh, um, I don't really have that much to say about it. I love the way trailing philodendron look. You can grow this climbing. I did grow a philodendron Brazil climbing for a while, but I do prefer just like the cascading look of growing it as a trailing plant. I'm gonna propagate this one too soon. I'm probably gonna cut off like all this, all of these bottom leaves, and then I'll just repot the cuttings into the top here. Although it is pretty full. I don't even know if I'll be able to do that, honestly. I might just have to give it a trim. But yeah, I love this one so much. I think it's so gorgeous and adds just like a really fun, bright pop of color over here. Okay, next we have my philodendron micans, which is the only one that is not directly potted into the planters, as you can see. Um, I am going to eventually directly pot it into a Wally Grow planter, but for now it's just not big enough. I need to take more propagations and add cuttings in and everything to get this to be a little bit more full. But this is one of my absolute favorites. It is, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with philodendron micans. It's very common um, when it comes to philodendron, but it has a beautiful velvet leaf. So very similar to the rest of the trailing philodendron on the wall, but it's velvety and it has like a beautiful orange sheen to it as well. And the new leaves come in with a cute little orange sheen. You can see an example of that right here on that new little guy. Look how bronzy. Yeah, such a gorgeous plant. It took me a while to kind of figure this one out, but once I did, um, it's been happy ever since. So yeah, philodendron micans. Okay, next we have my philodendron Brazil. There's not too much to say about these last two because they're just hardly philodendron, which I've already kind of talked about, but again, another really common, um, easy to find, affordable plant that I think is just gorgeous. The variegation on the leaves is just stunning. I will say that this has probably been the slowest one on the wall and it's hard to say whether it was just like the specific plant I picked out or whether it's due to it being the Brazil variety, I don't really know, but now it seems to be doing really well. I'm getting a lot of new leaves and it looks really healthy and beautiful. So yeah, love the Brazil so much. Okay, and then last but not least, we're ending the video off with a classic. This is just the regular green Hartley philodendron and it's gorgeous. I love this so much. It's honestly one of my favorites when it comes to trailing plants. I just think that it's so classic, so beautiful, very easy to grow, um, gets really long, and propagates really easily. Like, it's just an all-around great plant. Again, I just love the cascading look that these trailing philodendron get, especially once they get a little bit bigger. But yeah, not much to say about it, but a great plant to end the video with. Okay, oh my goodness. Thank you so much if you stuck with me and made it through to the end. I can imagine that this is going to be a bit of a long video because I think I've been talking for an hour and a half now in my time. <laughs> the sun is going down and it's also getting noisy outside, so it's perfect time for me to end this video. Thank you so, so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Let me know which plant you like the best or let me know your favorite uh, trailing plant down below. Do you love trailing plants as much as I do? I'd love to hear. Uh, yeah, thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Try